education, making hundreds of people thought it was a joke. The schools were built to teach deprived children of the broke. And the wealthy, smart Americans came to a scary realization. They realized some educated kids would grow up to be political opposition. So those kids would grow up and someday have the right to vote. A couple of reforms about education is what conservative Americans wrote. But the free school system, it had a lot of problems. Teachers wouldn't teach enough and they loved to harm them. Into the picture came this guy named Horace Mann, Secretary of Mass Board of Education. He decided to try as best he can to help out schools across America. He felt a less classic pain, so for better conditions, he decided to campaign. He called for the Prussian school model across the nation, which is the belief that everyone is entitled to the same education. My boy Horace campaigned for other things too. He spent a curriculum, longer school terms, and better buildings for the schools. Horace Mann didn't get alone, no sir. Another guy who helped in the movement was named the Webster. He graduated from Yale and was born in the state of Connecticut. He's oftentimes considered the schoolmaster of the public. His useful reading lessons were used nationwide by millions of children, and these lessons were designed to promote patriotism. Published in 1828, he wrote Webster's Dictionary. It took 20 years to write and helped standardize the vocabulary. There was this teacher and preacher from Ohio named William H. Guffey, the great school reader. He sold 122 million copies. McGuffey's readers is textbook for schools which packed with lessons, taught things like morality, patriotism, and idealism. Learn through schools, education was sought. If you wanted to get smart, you didn't have to be taught. Private subscription libraries and tax support libraries expanded. Learning was brought to the masses by Lyceum Lecture Association. In education back in the day, religion played a big role. The Second Great Awakening led to the creation of many small denominational liberal arts colleges, mostly in the South and West. However, these schools weren't thought of back then as the best. These schools only taught mathematics and moral philosophy and the ancient traditional languages like Latin and Greek. There was little intellectual vitality and a lot of boredom and the non religious scholars need a university for them. State colleges were popping up, federal land grants helped their growth. First state university was showing up in the South. First one was North Carolina, 1795. Then came UVA on 1819. Free education in America, man, it was pretty tight. The future of the United States schools was looking pretty bright. Educational advances finally happened, though it took real long. I can't think of anything else, so now it's the end of the song.